In this video I'm going to show you how I painted this owl with fireflies on a spooky background with acrylic paints. Let's get to it! I've already put a layer of paint down before I started. I'm doing the same as I did that first layer on the second layer. I've mixed phthalo blue with phthalo green and a bit of white and then I'm blending out any um, brush strokes with a mop brush. You saw me picking at the paint there, I've left a bit of a blemish. Um, that was a hair caught in the paint that I noticed. I'm not too worried about it, leaving the marks. I'm going to do so many layers, you're not going to notice by the end of the painting anyway. Between each layer, I'm making sure I dry with a hairdryer before I go back over. The more layers I put, I'm going to be making it smoother and smoother. And to give it a bit more of a spooky feel, I'm using my airbrush as well on this to lighten up even more that centre focal point that I had, um, just to give it a softer look. So I'm just using a bit of white to do that. I've then used a white charcoal pencil to basically just put in my trees and now I'm going over with a very light version of that phthalo blue, phthalo green and white mix to plot in some of my trees in the background and when I've done them I've gone over to soften them again with my airbrush to give it a bit more of a misty look. I wanted a misty look for this background, a bit more spooky and I'll go over with a slightly darker version of that colour so I've added a tiny bit of black to that tree colour to come in with some more of my sort of slightly further forward trees and I'm doing the same thing again I'm just using a liner brush to line in the branches that are coming over and just dotting those in and then adding a few highlights to those trees and again when I've done that I'm going over with the airbrush to add in the misty look to it and push them back further. Now I'm coming over to the final layer of trees now I'm making them even darker than before but I've also got a bit of um, the sort of light turquoisey colour from the highlights in with um, my paints. So I've got like half of it on the paint, um, the dark colour, half of it is the white. And that's just given me very easy cheating highlights um, to add to the trees, which I will go over again a bit later. But because um, I had that on the um, brush, it just added the highlights as I went, which made them look a bit more natural. Using my liner brush to add in a couple more of leaves because I want this spooky and to look real. There's a couple of leaves just left on the trees there in my spooky forest. And again, making sure that I um, dry in between each of my layers and then finishing with the airbrush just to keep it looking misty and spooky. I'm working on the branch first that the owl is sitting on. I'm trying to work from back to front so the forest was in the background and then the owl sitting on the branch, so I want to do the branch first. Uh, I've just got um, a grey colour mixed with the blue, black and white, and then a little bit of the blue um, to get my lights and darks in, and a bit of white then to add the highlights. And then when that's dry, I go over it with the colour that I want the branch to be, and then over with my blues and darks, because I want the darks and the um, blues, sorry, from the background to be in that tree because I want it all to look like it's part of the same picture. I don't want it to look like I've just stuck an owl on the front of any old painting. So I want them to all look like they belong together and that they're in the same scene. So I'm just working on my highlights and my lights and darks until I'm happy with that. And then once I'm happy with that, I move on to the owl. Now I'm doing the blocking in some white areas of the owl first, the white of the eyes, the white of the beak, and then some of the feathers. Um, I'm not blocking the whole thing through because I want some of the colour in the background to stay with my owl, again, to help keep it a part of the scene. Um, I need those colours in there somewhat so that it's believable that the owl belongs to this painting. That doesn't mean to say I'm not going to cover a lot of it over and then have to repaint it, but it's just easier to start with so I can see where everything's going. Um, so I've blocked in my lights and then dried it and then I've gone over with some darks and then I'm going back over now. I've got a very, very small rake brush, also called a comb brush, to add in some of the feathers. And then when that's dry, I'm going over with a glaze. So it's just the colour that I want with a lot of water added into it over so that I can see what's underneath it still. because It's very translucent, but it tints the colour of what I want and you can still see all the work I've done underneath, which makes life a lot easier. Now throughout this painting I had a heck of a time trying to get the eyes right so you'll see me numerous times 
throughout this painting going back to the eyes um, to get the pupils right because at one point he looks cross-eyed another time he looks like his eyes are going in completely different directions um, so nothing was ruined I just had to keep going over until I was happy with how it looked so as you can see going back over now with more highlights I've got my liner brush I'm paying attention to the direction that the um, feathers are all going um, very important to do that they sort of go in clumps and clusters they do crisscross as well um, if you don't pay attention to that you're going to get a very weird looking owl so I just added a shadow through the eye there and I'm coming back through with a few more details for underneath the eye and a few more shadows and just building up as I would any other painting you just building up this is going to go through some very 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 ugly stages before it comes together and looks like it's supposed to so I've just broken it down for myself I've concentrated on the head first I'm getting as much of the head complete as I can before I work over onto the body and then when the body's in I'll tweak little details between the two to marry them together and make them look like they belong so I realized at this point that I hadn't been getting my contrast right so I went through with some more darks um, so that I could really see where my darks were supposed to be and then add the light um, on top I hadn't gone dark enough before so don't be afraid to go darker than you think you're going to need to on these things because adding the highlights on top it's going to lighten the color an awful lot more so nine times out of ten things are a lot darker than you think they are there's no problem if you've gone too light you just paint over it and keep layering until it looks how you want to but it saves a few layers if you um do it first now just then i got my i got my tracing of the owl that i'd drawn and gone back over those eyes so i could see better where the pupils were supposed to be because as i say i had a bit of a nightmare getting the eyes of this guy where they're supposed to be so i went back over and put them back where they were supposed to be so that i could try and position them a lot better throughout the painting because it's very easy to go over your lines when you're um painting and so just slightly distort things like the eyes and the slightest bit wrong with an eye will really change the expression and the way it's looking so we're on to the body now i'm using a rake brush once again also called a comb brush and i'm just plotting in where those feathers go i'm trying to leave the gaps of the under paint underneath painting in there again to keep the colour in the background and then once I've got the whites in I've dried it with a hairdryer and I'm going over with my actual colour of the owl so that's um, some browns a little bit of deep purple I've got in there as well um, and a bit of black and I'm just putting some shadows and the feather colour where they need to be for this painting I've also put in where the toes are going to be I will be shading them in a bit later so it's just building up again building up again and as you can see now i'm starting to block the body in you can see that the head isn't dark enough so in a bit i will go back through and i will darken that head once again it's a pity that you can't see this in real life the color is so hard to capture on the camera correctly it's washed out here because it's underneath my easel lamp but even the actual photos don't do it justice. The colours of blues and sort of like tealy colours that you can get in the backgrounds, it's so hard to capture correctly. It's so, with all the layers that get added, it's got so much depth to it. And you can't quite see it um, through a camera, which is such a shame. But going back through the head now, trying to balance my piece out, make sure the darks and the lights match where they're supposed to be and add a full shape through to the head. Now I'm not just using black to add darks, I'm in amongst the feathers, I'm using the brown colours with some black added into it. And I've got a lot of deep purple um, in there too, or deep violet it's called, in there too, um, to, so it's not flat. I've got no problem using black paint, but you do need to mix it with something else um, or put something else over it so that it doesn't flatten out your picture. You need it nice and rich and you do that by adding the colours that are already in there. The time I wouldn't add black really is with the yellows and oranges because yellow and oranges go a funny green colour if you um, add black over them, which sometimes you want, but mostly you don't. So I'd stick with sort of purples and um, magentas and things like that to um, and purpley tones to shade oranges and yellows. But for this part, adding the black in with the brown works very well for me. So that's what I did. 
I'm just adding some more feather details with my liner brush now. Just getting in amongst those feathers and starting to slowly build up the feather shape. Now I realise I'd lost a lot of the actual colour of the owl, so I'm going back over the tops of the feathers with them, because in my reference photo, the tops of the feathers were the darker colours and then they were white tipped. So I'm trying to show that and say so slowly building it up, adding some highlight to the eyes and a bit more colour to the eyes, so a bit of orange went in there then. I think it was burnt sienna, that one. And then just working on those pupils because the eyes were really bugging me, as I've said throughout this whole piece. Don't forget, if you are starting to struggle getting your colour down, things are starting to blend and look a bit muddy, dry it off with a hairdryer or wait overnight or wait for a couple, for an hour or so. Just wait for it to dry completely and then you can go back over and glaze colours and add more detail as you want to. The brilliant thing about acrylic paints is you can do that and you don't have a huge long waiting time. So putting some more of the blues back through now for, to make him stay with the piece. I felt he was starting to look a bit sticker-like. And then back over that with more highlights as well. And because these paints are quite translucent, every time I add a glaze, I can still see what's gone before. So it just adds more and more depth to the painting. So that's why I like to work this way. So still paying attention to where the light's hitting the feathers and the way that the feathers are falling because they crisscross a lot on the face. And they're never straight. They've always got a slight curve to them. So make sure you don't draw straight feathers, although he's going to look very, very bedraggled and not like the elegant owl that he's supposed to. So some darks once again going through. I think I'm just using a flat brush for this bit, just adding some more of the feather marks and then back in with a liner brush. As I say, just building up as I go, that's all there is to it, just keep on working. If it doesn't look right, then you've not finished your painting yet, just keep on going. But I do go through every single painting thinking, oh my goodness, what am I doing? This is not going to come off. And you just keep working and then all of a sudden it suddenly comes together and you'll surprise yourself. So now I'm going back over now with my airbrush. You didn't have to use an airbrush. I can do this with paints, but I have the airbrush, so it's easy. So I'm just added a bit more depth throughout his dark side um, where the shadows are and then I had painting left so I went round and just darkened up the shadows around the log as well and now I'm going in adding the fireflies so I sprayed a little bit of white and then I've gone over them with a bit of yellow to finish off my painting because I wanted it to look quite magical and here he is done. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave me a thumbs up. I post new content every Thursday. If you don't want to miss anything, please press the subscribe button below. You can also press that bell icon. It makes sure that you get notified by YouTube for all new content I post. That's it from me now. Bye, guys.